am an illustrator. I work with my pencil and my sketchbook. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's what I want to hear. Disclaimer. <laughs> um, this is uh, terrifying. I am, as I said, working with my pencil and my sketchbook at home in my sofa in my nightgown, and I'm not used to speaking in front of people, and especially not in English, which is not my language. I am from Denmark, Copenhagen, and I'm very honored to be here, and I will try to enjoy this privilege to be on this stage. <laughs> That's my ambition. Um, this is uh, home in Denmark. <laughs> My kitchen. <laughs> um, I think I am invited here to tell you um, my story. And my story, I have many stories as we heard the other day, but this particular story that I'm going to tell you today started approximately seven years ago. I was um, at home, I had just given birth to my third daughter. Um, I was a freelancer, I was a freelance graphic designer, and I was um, very happy, obviously, to be a mother of a healthy child, but also I was worried about my company, worried about my skills, worried about being forgotten while I was sitting at home breastfeeding and the world just passing by out my window. So I decided to spend this time that I was going to be at home, taking care of my kids, to improve my skills and start drawing a little bit because I always enjoyed drawing and I never had the time to do it. Um, so I made myself this challenge that I would draw a little drawing every day and put it on Instagram just in order to have something to keep me grounded and be me while everything else was a little bit of chaos. Can I just ask you real quick, how many of you are freelancers or working on their own in some way in here? Quite a lot. And how many of you are parents? Also quite a lot. And how many of you find that balance challenging? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, if you were just like, no, that's just you, I was going <laughs> to <laughs> go home to Denmark. <laughs> Anyway, this was one of the first drawings I did. I think it's quite obvious what this is about. Um, this was one of the other first drawings I did. Um, it's a self-portrait. This is me. <laughs> it's also um, a family portrait. Um, these are friends that I used to have. <laughs> All my work is in Danish. I tried to translate some of it later, but this one I don't it didn't come out right. But these are going like Lina? Who? Did we know anybody called Lina? And uh, this is my youngest daughter, Solvai, going, whoa! The two-year-old going, I wanna see you frozen. <laughs> I had a teenager at the time, a 13-year-old from a previous relationship going, Mom, you promised that we should look at shoes right now. What are you doing? <laughs> and um, this is an awful lot of housework that I didn't do. And down here is a door slamming and a little uh, bubble saying, see you in four days, honey. <laughs> because my husband is a musician and he is a touring with his guitar around Denmark. So very often his work days are like five or four days a week where he's away. Um, and also being a freelancer, I didn't have any income while I was home taking care of my kids. So my husband had to work even more than he usually did in order to support our family and all that. 
I'm sure you know what that's like. I don't know how it's like you, but that's how it is at home where I come from. Um, this is another drawing from the time. Um, my husband on the phone going, oh, honey, I love our life together. <laughs> my two-year-old Duncan doing, I've done shit. <laughs> and me being like, "Ah, oh, what? Together? Really? <laughs> when I set out to do these drawings, I really thought that I would be drawing flowers or vases or <laughs> nice things. I also thought that I would have plenty of time to do that because I would just be at home taking care of the kids. Um, and I soon discovered that not only did I not have time at all to do my drawings, <laughs> this one over here I actually drew with my left hand while I was holding the baby with my right hand breastfeeding because I had to do this challenge every day. I should do a drawing and I didn't find the time for it. Um, I also found out that this need to draw my life and my feelings and my situation became more than just a drawing challenge. It became my lifeline during this period of time. Um, I also found out that what I did with my left hand was sometimes better than what I did with my right hand. And that maybe becoming really good at drawing naturalistically was no longer the quest, but trying to um, communicate the feelings and the stories behind was more important to me. Um, because this time on maternity leave just was way harder than any of the other times I had been on maternity leave. At the same time, I had the, this thing with my foot so I couldn't walk for six months. <laughs> so I was literally crawling around on the floor with a baby, a two-year-old, a teenager, and a touring musician husband. And this was what it looked like when he got home from work. He'd been out playing. His name is Kelsen, that's his last name. And maybe this is a little bit how I imagined it. But I imagined that <laughs> the audience would go like, Kelsen, Kelsen. And I'd been at home for four days, and um, all the kids are like, mommy, mommy, or more like, mommy, mommy. And um, I was wearing one of these at the time. I don't know what you call that. But I, in order to be able to stand up and cook for the children, I had to wear one of those. So. Our hi, honey, I'm sure was equally heartfelt when we reunited after the weekends. But we were in very different places at this time. So it led to this new kind of situation where we had to learn each other. We had to know each other all over again, like, who are you? Um, my husband actually said to me at the time, I just don't understand. I mean, I thought it was every woman's biggest dream to be at home taking care of a baby. <laughs> and you seem to be so bitter all the time. <laughs> and I was like, who told you? <laughs> and I found out that it was not just my husband who hadn't been paying attention. It was, it's actually a story that we keep telling ourselves and each other repeatedly that women are supposed to be really happy going around at home taking care of their kids. I mean, even my mother told me this. Sweetie, you ought to be happy. You have three healthy kids and a husband who is nice and good looking and getting some money home every weekend. And I was happy for all those things, but I was, I was not happy about laundry and housework and staying up all night and all the other things that comes with taking care of kids 
as you probably know. As I told you, I posted my drawings on Instagram, and I did it as a very personal project just for my own sake, but I soon realized that other people would write to me going, oh, I know that feeling so well. Oh, are you in that space? I used to be right there. And um, I thought it was a very specific case that my husband was a musician and touring, but I found out that other women's wives were soccer players, scientists, surfers, something that led them to spend a lot of time outside the house and leaving the mothers at home with the kids. Um, this is uh, my daughter, she was very into Frozen, so she's singing like, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> <Did it? laughs> um, and I'm trying to have this conversation with my husband, going, what's that, honey? Crayfish tails? Cool white wine? Oh, that sounds so hard. <laughs> yeah, you must be really tired when you get home. And the other baby just going, mwah. Um, and so I discovered that I had been thinking all along, this is just me. But the more feedback I got, the more I was like, ah, maybe there are more of us having these mixed feelings. Um, this was an actual situation. One day I was breaking down and crying to my neighbor, like everybody else seems to be knowing what to do and how to handle this. And I'm the only one not being able to do this right. And she told me, we all cry when nobody's watching. And that was really comforting. And at the same time, I felt like my Instagram, my growing Instagram community became this kind of safe space where we could do this for each other. Like, it's not just us. It's not just us. We, we're here with each other and we all cry sometimes. And so my followers actually encouraged me to gather my drawings and make them into my um, book. And it became my first book. It's called Every Day It Starts All Over Again. And it's filled with these <laughs> nice little drawings <laughs> of family life and being on maternity leave. And I was, so, um, I was very excited when I was invited on TV in Denmark to tell about my book, about my project. I was telling how I found it hard and losing my identity and all of a sudden being home alone with kids. And the TV um, company put a little clip on Facebook. Never to go there. Um, and these were some of the comments I got. There were like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these comments. She shouldn't have had kids. Yikes. What did she think would happen when she had kids? Little kids are cute. She should have used an IUD. How very sad. Then don't. People said that my kids should be removed from home because I was obviously not taking care of them, probably. And it just continued. Um, I'm getting emotional. I'm not telling you this because I want you to feel sorry for me. I am telling you this because this is what we tell every woman, every mother who dares to speak up and tell you how she really feels. And so, after reading some of these comments, I shouldn't have done that, but I did. I found myself left with two possibilities. I could either dig a big, big hole go down there, cover myself up, never speak again, bury myself with shame. That was apparently the intention. Or I could become furious, <laughs> which was what I did. <laughs> And it was at this point that my project shifted from being a very personal, um, egoistic problem into being more of a political problem, a uh, project. Um, because if it's not just about me, it's about all of us. We really need to have this conversation. Um, 
Time is going too fast. I have so much more to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so I continued drawing. I went back to work. Things continued to be difficult, challenging. Everyone with a fever, raise your hand in the air. Um, <laughs> it's just always me who does it all. No, me, 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 me. What I'm interested in doing in my drawings and in my work continuously is finding that gap between who we want to be and who we really are. And in that little field, I think there is a lot of interesting stuff going on. And that's what I'm always looking for when I find inspiration for my, my work. Well, honey, you know, we, I've got to go up and clean up and clear the table so I can do the dishes, so I can put away the dry laundry and arrange the new laundry so I can go to bed in order to get up in the morning, right? <laughs> oh, and she said, that was a good one. I'm going to read another one. And I'm going with this whole explanation. And she got, wee, read one more. <laughs> um, it's very important to me that I don't have any answers. It's not like, I, I wish that I could tell you, so we should do this, and this is what we need to do. But I can tell you that. I'm just uh, encouraging you to ask the questions. Um, these are some, I wrote this down, deeply persistent structures, like Stephen Kinsella said yesterday. Um, and I think we need to have this conversation about, is it enough to say this is how it always was? Women took care of the kids, men conquered the world? Or can we stir things up a little bit? Honey, I do love you. I promise I'll be better at showing it tomorrow. Good night. Because hard things, just like climate crisis, doesn't go away <laughs> just because we don't talk about it. And we don't become happy just because we are told to be happy. So I think we should be better at acknowledging our true feelings and share them with the world and show each other who we really are. So now, seven years later, I've done four books, two children's books and two of my autobiography, what do you call that, autobiographical books? <laughs> um, and I have a web shop and a little store in Copenhagen where I sell my drawings and my books and other people's books. I do events with book talks, little concerts, but trying to encourage that conversation about who we are, who we want to be, who can we become in our parenthood, in our relationships, in the world, um, with the environment, everything that we've been talking about here. This has been very inspirational for me. And today my kids are seven, nine, and 20. And they are the coolest people I know. I love hanging out with them. At the same time, they're really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and if they were here, I'm sure they'd tell you that so am I. And I guess that is what true love looks like. 